Welcome to Whiskey is the Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano. Today is my channel segment that I'm calling Sip It or Skip It. If you're new to the channel and you're not familiar with this segment, I have all of my whiskeys randomized on my phone. I'm gonna spin the wheel, whatever it selects, I'm gonna pull it off the shelf and do a quick review. Let you know if I'm going to keep sipping on the bottle until it's gone and then I'm gonna replace it because I like it. Or once the bottle's gone, I'm gonna skip buying it again and move on to something else. So let's go ahead and spin the wheel and see what we're doing today. All right, it is looking, okay, Clyde May's five-year single barrel. I think this is going to be a single barrel pick from Total Wine and More. So let me go ahead and grab it, pour it, and then do a quick review. All right, so here we go. We got the Clyde Mays five-year-old. And just like I said, this was a Total Wine and More store pick, barrel 666. Just like always, the information for the whiskey is right here, along with my sip it or skip it tallies. I have a document in the description below if you are interested in my sip it and skip it tallies since I started the entire series. That's there, just click on it, it'll open it up. It's not a fancy document, I just have them in chronological order from the time I started my sip it and skip it segment up until now. So let's get this thing poured. Really quick, we got 102 proof, 61.99 is what I paid for it. All right, I can already smell sweetness. This has a very heavy butterscotch note to it. There's some red apple, a little bit of cherry, red berries. This is very, very fruit sweet on the nose. Don't get a whole lot of spice or oak. It's all sweet, very, very sugary, like very sugary. Right, let's go ahead and get it on the palate. Got a little uh, residue on the glass. All right, let's get it on the palate, see what I think. Hmm, that hit pretty flat. Based on what I'm getting on the nose, that is not transferring to the palate. There's a good amount of ethanol. There is a sweetness, but I can't really pin that sweetness to red fruit, the berries, the caramel, the vanilla, the brown sugar, definitely no spice and absolutely no oak, no barrel influence that I can actually pick up. But I am shocked. I would, I would say that this is probably the one bourbon that I've had that there is that much discrepancy between what I'm getting on the nose and what's on the palate. It's very interesting. Let me get that second sip down. Maybe that was just an anomaly. Let me go ahead and, and concentrate on that a little bit more and see if I'm actually getting what I'm not getting. Crazy, fantastic on the nose. Let's get that second sip down. Yeah, that is just falling completely flat. There is ethanol. I mean, you know you're drinking bourbon. There's small amounts of that brown sugar, caramel, and vanilla. All of those vibrant fruit notes that I was getting on the nose are lost. Tastes a little bit thin. The sweetness that I do get is a sugary sweetness, but it doesn't seem to have any any of those red fruit notes that I got on the nose. Boy, that's really, really weird. Let me go ahead and, oh, I don't have any water. I was gonna rinse, see if I can clear my palate out a little bit. Well, now that it's sitting here, I do get a little bit of an oak note on the palate or on the finish, it's sugary sweet. So it, it does, maybe it, it tastes a little bit like I had a spoonful of sugar and then after, or you know what it is? It's sweet tea. The sweet tea that's got a lot of sugar in it, after you drink it, you end up having that aftertaste of sugar in your mouth with a little bit of tea. That's what it is. And it's very, very faint. Yeah, not really necessarily digging on this all that much. The nose is absolutely fantastic. I mean, if I could smell it and then drink something else, that would be great. But let me get that third sip in just to double check. And I think you already know where I'm heading with this, but maybe that third sip is going to change things around. I doubt it, but here we go anyway. So on that third sip, right before I actually took the drink, breathing in a little bit, 
I had some of that nose that kind of came through on the palate. It helped it out just a little bit. Got the butterscotch, got that cherry note, brown sugar, caramel, vanilla, sugar. But after that, it once it hit the palate, it just falls flat. Tastes like a sugary drink. The aftertaste is sweet tea with lots of sugar in it. So is this going to be a sip or is it a skip for me? As you probably already can tell based on my reaction throughout this entire video, this will be a skip. And even though this is a single barrel pick by Total Wine and More, I definitely will not pick up another one of these based on this offering. Is that justified or not? I don't know. If you are familiar with Clyde Mays five year, if you have one that is a single barrel, let me know what you think. If you are in Phoenix, Arizona, and you have picked one of these things up, let me know what you think about it. If you're in another area, I don't even, I'm not even really necessarily familiar with Clyde Mays, whether or not they do single barrels only, or if they actually have a, a regular offering of their bourbon. Let me know in the comments down below. Do all those things that YouTubers ask you to do. If you're not subscribed to the channel and you like this information, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. And the only thing left to say is wherever you're at in your journey, I hope you are enjoying it. And until the next time, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Usually I end up with a sip, but I don't even know if there's a reason to sip this because I know what I'm going to get. We'll talk to you later. Bye.